Hello my dear students, here I am with the third lecture of disasters and hazards. Children, you remember we have discussed about earthquakes, tsunami, floods and droughts. Let's move on to landslides now. You have heard of landslides? Yes, they are rapid sliding of large mass of bedrock. Disasters due to landslides, we can say are far less dramatic than due to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis and cyclones. But the impact on the natural environment and national economy is no way less severe. Like other disasters which are sudden, unpredictable and largely controlled by macro or regional factors, landslides are largely controlled by localized factors. Landslide vulnerability zones are identified. How are they identified? By the past experiences as to which area is more prone to landslides, by the frequency and certain casual relationship with the controlling factors like geology, geomorphic agents, slope, land use, vegetation cover and not to forget the human activities. Based on all these things, there are various vulnerability zones identified in India. See, the first zone is very high vulnerability zone. It is relatively young mountains, areas of Himalayas, Andaman and Nicobar which come under this category. Even the regions which receive very high rainfall and which have steep slopes like Western Ghats and Nilgiris. Not to say the northeastern regions along with the areas that experience frequent ground shaking due to earthquake. Areas of intense human activities particularly which are related to construction of roads, construction of dams, embankments are also included in very high risk zone. High vulnerability, a small difference between very high and high. The areas that have almost similar conditions to those included in the first category, very high, they are also included here. The only difference between these two is combination, intensity and frequency of the controlling factors. All the Himalayan states and the states from the northeastern regions except the plains of Assam, they are included in the high vulnerability zone. Moderate to low vulnerability, the areas which receive less precipitation such as trans Himalayan areas of Ladakh, Spiti which is in Himachal Pradesh, undulated yet stable relief and low precipitation area in the Aravali hills, the rain shadow area in the western and the eastern Ghats and Deccan plateau, they also experience occasional landslides. Landslides due to mining, subsidence are more common in the states like Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Goa and Kerala. So, that means the human activities are equally responsible for this landslides. The other areas, the remaining parts of India, states like Rajasthan, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Assam, they come under this category where landslides are less and they are safer. What are the consequences of landslides? Although they are concerning the small area, localized area, of direct influence, but the road block, destruction of railway lines, channels blocking due to rockfall have far reaching consequences. Diversion of river courses due to landslides can also lead to flood, loss of life and property. It also makes spatial interaction difficult, risky also and very costly, so which affects the development projects adversely. What are the mitigation strategies for landslide? It is very advisable and always advisable to adopt area specific measures to deal with landslides because India has varied relief features, different terrains. Restriction on the construction and no other development activities such as roads and dams. So, less should take place there. Limiting agricultural practices to valleys 
and areas with moderate slopes. Control on the development of large settlements in the high vulnerability zones should be enforced. How we can make embankments also? And all these activities should be supplemented by positive actions like promoting large scale afforestation programs, construction of buns to reduce the flow of water. Terrace farming, step farming should be encouraged in the northeastern hilly states. Now, when we have studied about most of the disasters which we can prevent, which we can prevent? No, which we cannot prevent. We can prevent the loss of life and property. This is what is disaster management. Disasters due to cyclones, unlike the ones caused by earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions are more predictable in terms of time and place. Moreover, with the help of development of techniques to monitor the behavior of cyclones, their intensity, their direction, the magnitude, it has become possible to manage the cyclone hazard in certain areas. Remember, previously we used to hear so much loss of life and pro property in the coastal areas of Odisha and Andhra Pradesh, but now that loss has minimized just because of the technology, just because of the development of techniques. Now, there are various measures to prevent damage from disasters, construction of cyclone centers, embankments, dikes, reservoirs, afforestation to reduce the speed of winds. Increase in the loss of life and properties in countries like India, Bangladesh, Myanmar in successive storms is largely due to high vulnerability of their population residing in the coastal areas. Now, a disaster management bill was passed in 2005 which defines disaster as a catastrophe, mishap, calamity or grave occurrence affecting any area. So, this bill was promoted so that the loss of life and property could be decreased. Try to learn this whole bill from the NCERT book. Now, there are various stages of disaster management, disaster mitigation. Disasters can be natural or the result of human activities. All the hazards need not turn into disasters. Since it is difficult to eliminate disasters, particularly the natural disasters, so what is the next best option? It is mitigation and preparedness. There are various stages. The first stage is pre-disaster management. When we know that this area is prone to a type of disaster, earthquake, tsunami or any other disaster, generating data, generating information about the disaster is must. Then the second work is to prepare vulnerability zoning maps, spreading awareness among the people about that disaster and disaster planning, preparedness, preventive measures should be taken so that the people become aware and loss of life does not take place. So, this is the stage which is pre-disaster management. The second stage is during disasters. When the disaster takes place, that particular time rescue and relief operations are must so that evacuation of the concerned people can be done. Construction of shelters, relief camps is also necessary. Supplying of water, food, clothing, medical aids is done during the disaster stage. So, children that is done on emergency basis. After disaster, when the people they have lost their relatives, lost their near and dear ones, lost their property, lost their crops, post disaster operation should involve rehabilitation and recovery of victims. It should also concentrate on capacity building in order to cope up with future disasters if any. These measures have special significance in our country because we are densely populated and which has about two third of its geographical area and equal proportion to its population vulnerable to disasters. So, the introduction of disaster management bill and establishment of National Institute of Disaster Management 
are the examples of a positive step taken by the government of India. So, children when you know that you are living in a vulnerable zone try to identify the disaster that can strike you. Try to plan out a preparedness scheme, a strategy to save yourself. You are precious for us because you are the future of the nation. You will contribute to the economy, to the development of our country. So, take care of yourself and create awareness. Thank you. Jai Hind.